All right, doing the programming on a F10 2011 535X drive. I have ECP connected via Ethernet, which is the way you have to do it. Uh, so far, everything is going well. All the modules that were on the measuring plan is being done, except for the CAS, which is in like 18%, and then the coding will have to take effect. Uh, on this vehicle, you don't need to do any like fiber optic or so because everything is being done through the OBD2 port. So everything is connected right there. Uh, you need to have a battery maintainer. I have the Snap-on uh, set up into 14.2 on the battery. You have to be careful that you don't lose that power because it's very important. As always, it's a little bit of a, I don't know, feeling weird when you're doing programming in so many different modules, uh, especially when you are messing with the CAS, which is a, a mobilizer on this uh, uh, BMWs. So I am still going in here. As I said, everything is going very well. So I'm going to stop the video and then I'll show you. I have I saved the measuring plan before or action leaks. Uh, action leaks uh, before you do this, and then I will save the after. I want to show that the CAS is now saying 100%. It has to put a tick on it. Check mark green, hopefully. That's the only part that I always get worried when I'm doing programming on these vehicles, uh, the CAS. Because if something happened, and if, okay, that went through perfect. Okay, so we got the CAS right there, program, and it was no problems. It should start now to do the coding, which is the next part on the list. You will see, you know, those lights coming on and off as you are doing the programming, like brake system problem, four by four, and so on. That is very normal when you're doing programming. All right, now the coding is taking effect, as you see which is the next step, which is very, very quick. So the coding on the DME is now the one is uh, on 100% perfect. I just want to make sure that all the list is in checks. This is also for my uh, future reference as well. That security key calibration is also very important and saving the most configuration, which everything as you see on the channel says NET. So that should be all be uh, done through the OVD port. All right, let me stop and I'll be right back guys. Oh, sorry for the noise. Uh, hopefully this microphone will take that off. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to show is uh, look at the integration level actual and the target. You see there is a big difference on coding and programming. So that's why we're doing this. And also to correct some issues that I have on the Baltronic. Uh, so you see uh, the last steps on here will be clear default memory and then read the default memory. Again, let me stop and keep going. All right, so for a future reference too, uh, the restored individual data went perfect and I saw the seat going back and forth and the recliner going up and down or forward and backward again. So now let's see what is gonna be the next step. So I restored data went just from one to pretty much complete. Uh, it took a little longer, but I guess that's the way the procedure goes. All right, security key calibrations and up update integration level, then went through perfect too. So now it's saving the most configuration. It'll turn the ignition off. I can see that in there. That is all being done automatically. Sometimes it's a little hard to calculate how much is this going to take because uh, it does it by itself. Now the steering wheel went out by itself too as well.
Lies are coming on and off. As you can see now, it has a like a, a sand clock on the safe mouse configuration. That means it's starting to do in the process on that. It performs some checks again. The steering wheel just it went completely out from here by itself. Everything is so far good. All our green checks, no no errors. This is also shown on account the planet control unit. The following post program operations are necessary initiation of the rear power window regulation and the tilts on roof. Okay, perfect. All right, now it's doing the initiation of the windows. The doors have to be closed. So, what I did is I closed the latch on the driver door to fake it that it's closed. That's all you really need to do. So, it's doing that the rear windows and it's also going to do the um, sunroof that went through perfect so now it's going to do the as you can see the initiation of the sunroof that's the next plan now the steering will move that is okay i haven't seen anything on the sunroof but now it is doing and as you can see the blind is opening the sunroof is going up and down now it's actually open the sunroof by itself and closing it. And now it's closing the blind, the blind. So everything is going very good. Only the sunroof is pretty much what is left. And then we'll be clearing the full codes. That's what it's doing now. And then read the full codes. I don't like to disturb the computer when I'm doing that. I was a little afraid of moving the cables. That is very, very dangerous when you're doing programming. Something comes off and you can be in trouble, but nothing happened this time. So everything is good. Ignition went off. So it's clearing the full, uh, full codes. Hopefully you guys pick that up and move uh, the steering wheel again. Ignition is on. So I cleared all the folds, all the full codes and it has a check mark as well. And now it's reading the full code memory. This is the last part of the test plan. And we have a problem still. It says no movement identify on the Baltronic. Message vehicle, identification, missing receiver, ICN, transmitter, CAS. I don't really know why. Cyber camera. Okay, so cyber camera run not learning. And I don't like that. Vehicle identification number missing. Receiver, ICN, transmitter, CAS. Hmm. I don't like that at all. All right, guys, uh, I would like to show, you know, to give some closure of this uh, repair that has been done on this BMW. I want to show how I test the computer outside, usually, and um, the waveform that we'll be getting on uh, that transistor. So let me get the computer close to you guys in a point. Um, I already follow these uh, these six uh, transistors in here are connected to the faces of the Baltronic, which on the connectors will be this one right here, and the three phases are the big pins in here. We see this before on the other captures of the. Um, the whole series so for those that wants to know more about what was going on with this computer in this vehicle please 
go back to the first, I think it's two parts. Hopefully they're a little long, but they got very good material. And I'm doing this because it's a very important closure on this repair. So what happened with this computer is the Valtronic, one of the phases got shorted and then end up damaging the transistors. And how you know that, you have to, uh, I mean, as far as BMW, it's very minimum information, but I can do this, uh, this test, and this is what I want to share with you. All right now that we saw that computer and everything, let me put this uh, in a better perspective so we can have a better look. I think that should work. So I have, this is a, a curved tracer and it's connected to my uh, picoscope. And I set the picoscope into X and Y, which is going to show the voltage and the current being applied to the transistors. Um, you can search on the internet what is a curved tracer. This is very, very easy, very common. So I am powering up right now. All right, so what I wanted to show, I have everything already going. Um, channel A is connected to the X and channel B is connected to the Y. One is voltage, the other one is current. Uh, this uh, box, it has two leads, negative and positive. All you gotta find in this computer, this is ground. I have ground here and some other spots in there. So let me show you first on a, on a capacitor how a waveform should look. So as you can see there, it's kind of like a circle. And I'm going to show you on a resistor. As you can see, it's kind of like a line, you know, leaning a little bit of an angle. Let me take the width a little bit because I can adjust the width of that uh, form here. Now let's take a look at the circle. You can see it's a little closer. If I go back down and I had it on 12 volts, I mean on 20 volts, let's go down into 10. And that is going to give us a bigger circle. That's all it does. So one channel in here is showing current. The other one is uh, voltage. I'm going to bring this a little bigger. So we don't need that much on the top. But so going back into the transistors that we have an issue. Again, this is one phase, the other phase, and the other phase. This is the emitter. And as you can see, one important thing to watch in here is that the horizontal is, is very straight. If I check the second one, it's kind of like the same thing, but look at the third one. You see how much a slope is that in between the, the two verticals? It's a very, very slope. So this transistor is damaged. We're gonna go to the next phase or the next phase on the other side, which is a, a positive. So this transistor, is also good and then this transistor let me make sure i grab any good it's good and on the same phase we got the slope they're the same transistor they got the same resistor the same capacitor so they should be reading the same exact thing but this not so this is a conclusive uh, information to tell me that these two transistors are damaged we can check other transistors in here like these ones in here, they got the the signature a little different, but this one right next to it is the same. You see how these two are exactly the same signal? And this is where the way you check is by comparison. When you have a shorter capacitor, see like right here? Oof, that is no good. Let me make sure we're in the right side. You have to compare one with another. So this is connected to a transistor. And that's why you have to be careful when you're analyzing the form. Which side are you looking at, you know? Very important. Okay, one thing I don't like about this one right here, it looks like it's a shorted. Yeah, we do have a shorter capacitor in here. Like this one right here. Yes, without a doubt, a shorter capacitor. Both sides are just a straight line. This is what you usually look when you have a shorter capacitor. And again, the computer, it took a hit. 
uh, it, it got replaced. We put a brand new computer. I did the programming, which you're going to see on, on, you know, on the whole video. And everything went smooth. Car is running. Customer is happy. It was very expensive repair, but it's nothing else you can do. All right, guys. Hopefully, you like the content again. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot.